Last week in round sailing, we sailed to St. Martin, where we repaired the lazy bag, met a lot of new people, went around the island and did some maintenance on Ron. My sister Cecilia and her boyfriend Oscar flew to St. Martin to visit and sail with us for the first time since we left Sweden. Oy, 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 oy. This is good when you're seasick. <laughs> <laughs> right, Molly? Is it? No, maybe not, but it's good. Gammel dansk is yeah. like uh, snaps. My sister's clothing brand, Crime City Clothing. No! <laughs> oh. This is vanilla sauce. This is the best with <laughs> apple pie. We have really to make good. apple pie now. And uh, what is this called in Swedish? Nypon or oh, in English? Nypon soppa. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. But it's good. Oh, knickebröd! <laughs> oh, manna green. It's porridge. Really good. Mm. Oh, that's for me! Swedish candy. <laughs> mm. Oh, good. <laughs> vad gott! En giffla. Åh, oh, den öppnar vi på en gång. Åh, okay. oh, vad gott! Finally good to go. Yeah, it took a while. Yeah. The water here is really, really slow to fill up the tanks. But now we're full. We're full on diesel, full on water, full on food and crew. Yeah. <laughs> Our first stop was Il Forchou, a small island north of St. Barts. The place is part of the marine park and they have put up mooring balls to protect the seabed. The island is uninhabited and the water is perfect for snorkeling. There was a catamaran that was wrecked on the rocks, and we swam over to check it out. I can imagine the despair and pain the owners must have felt when this happened. Yep. 
<laughs> so the big shark scare is here. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, so maybe. Now we're on the lookout. <laughs> you see any shark? <laughs> <laughs> to show St. Bart's to our guests, we rented a Moki car to show them around the island. There is St. Martin, and between St. Martin and St. Bart's is Il Fauché, where we anchored the other night. So it's pretty close. I think it's 11 nautical miles between uh, Philipsburg and St. Martin to um, Gustavia, here on St. Bart's. And down here is uh, Colombier, it's another anchorage. The monkey? My sister always has fun ideas, and this time she had brought some wigs so we can take a cool group photo. Okay, ni redo? Okay. Our way back to Rome wasn't that easy. The outboarder decided to give us some trouble, so we had to paddle our way back to the boat. After cleaning the carburetor, I got it going again, and we could have a fun night in town. We're sailing towards Seiba, uh, a small volcanic island uh, about 28 nautical miles from St. Bart's. We're really looking forward to visit this island. Uh, it's an island with no beaches, but a lot of nature. And since it's a volcano, and it's like pretty much a, just a big rock that just goes up like this. happening you're crying yeah I'm crying and cooking at the same time chopping up really strong uh, onions <laughs> I'm gonna make some lunch for us we're sailing a really smooth downwind sail to Seba the sea is really calm and pretty flat so it's easy for me to be down below so I'm gonna make a simple pasta meal, but with uh, instead of normal pasta, we're gonna make with soya bean. It's a pasta made of soya bean that uh, uh, Celia and Oscar brought from Sweden. And then just a normal tomato sauce with that. So I'm gonna dry my tears and start cooking. <laughs> Thank you. 
Are you excited to go to Seiba? Yeah. It's a really, really cool island. <coughs> the plan tomorrow is to take a long walk all the way up to the top. Seba belongs to the Kingdom of the Netherlands, and there's only 1,500 people living on the island. Yeah, we're on our way up to the bottom on Seba, it's the capital of this island and it's a pretty steep walk from the harbour Most of the houses are painted in white and green with a terracotta colored roof. Seba is very clean and tidy, and people are friendly and so happy to welcome you to their island. The village, the bottom, got its name from its location down in a valley. <laughs> We're hitchhiking to windward side. It's the um, uh, it's the other uh, bigger village on the island. It's a really cool island, and I think we're already there. On our hike to Mount Scenery, we had the island's expert guide, James Crocodile Johnson. James' ancestors were pirates who decided to settle down on Seba in 1665. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. Are you tired? No, not really. We're taking it quite slow. so. It's a really good uh, history. Ah, this is scary. It's so steep beneath me. Yeah, so we're at the top. We're at uh, 890 meters. Yeah. I can't really remember. 887 maybe? 2700 feet. Yeah, above sea level. So this is uh, the Netherlands' highest mountain, or in the kingdom of the Netherlands, yeah. the highest mountain in the kingdom. Yeah. So 
but I don't know if this is the top. It might be that there is another top over there that there are a few feet higher. Yeah, but that we... is really high up. Yeah, that is amazing views. And down there somewhere we have a rock. So we were wrong before. This is really the highest uh, place on the island. And how high is it? Um, I don't know. 877 meters. Ah. Whee! I'm on top of the world! <laughs> it's so windy! So down here is the world's smallest commercial airport. The runway is only 400 meters and they get four planes a day here. So I guess it was pretty scary the first time they landed a plane here because on either side of the runway there's deep cliffs down into the ocean so the first guy who landed here I think it was in the 50s he was from St. Bart's the neighboring island over there <laughs> yeah and he was courageous enough to land with his small air airplane down here before there was an airstrip and uh, yeah after that they constructed this and uh, because it's the only area on the island that was long enough and flat enough to construct an airport on, or air strip. So down here is a village called Hell's Gate. And that name come from because uh, back in the days when there was no roads, there were only trails. Uh, the people had to go down where the harbor is, which is on more or less the other side of the island. They had to hike there and to pick up all the things that had come with their ships and then they had to hike back so it took them like 24 hours to go back and forth so it was like hell for them so that's why this village got its name hell's gate All right. Uh, wow. <laughs> that was slippery and muddy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me see the view. Oh, we were just up there. Really nice view. It was pretty special walking through a crack <laughs> in the mountain. Back in Windward Side, we visited the trail shop and tried Seba Spice. With cinnamon, cloves... Sometimes you can find this up on the trail. The yeah. same <laughs> is it good? Yeah, it is. Good. Yeah, it's, it's good, very yeah. sweet. It is. Later on, James took us to the tide pools on the east side of the island where molten lava has created a fantastic scenery. Yeah. <laughs> Unsurprising. Unsurprising. <laughs> 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 
Sei Bay is not often visited by sailors, because it's pretty unprotected. There are no bays, so the swell gets around the whole island. It's also very deep, so the marine park has put out mooring balls. In our case, we needed to stay on a mooring close to the harbor, which is the only safe place to land with your dinghy, because it was too far to go with our dinghy from the west side. <laughs> what do you think about the sail today, Oscar? Today it's been really good. Uh, I think this last part of the trip has been a lot better than the beginning, when the yeah. way it's not that big waves and I think it's really nice. Thank you so much for watching this episode. To see more, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you want to support future videos, please check out our Patreon page. Hey, Dot!